what's up everybody hope you're having a good day i want to do a little tutorial on some of the place tools that came out a couple years ago and i want to make sure that you're aware of them because they're incredibly useful so here are the tools it's uh, the place tool and the dynamic place tool so i'll go over the place tool first let's say that we want to duplicate this vase and place it if we click on this place tool we're going to get a little gizmo on here and we have a rotate and we also have this square purple box here, which if we click and drag, we can scale up the object. We have all of our settings over here for the place tool. And if we just click and drag this, you can see that it is respecting the geometry in the scene. And it's doing that by creating a bounding box around every object in the scene. And then when it places it, it will respect that bounding box, which is really great. If you wanna make a copy instead of an instance, you can change this to copy. And if we click and drag here, you'll see that we have an actual physical geometry here. And we can go ahead and change the scale or rotation of this. And you can see how easy it is now to just um, make duplicates and kind of place them all over your scene. So it's really, really easy. Uh, there's a few settings here. Normally I keep it to bounding box and I keep it to normal. You can change the up direction if you want to. And then if you make a copy, the Y direction will be flipped. So it'll be upside down if you want to play around with the orientation of your objects. One other great thing about this is if we go to our asset browser and we have our just our general move tool set and we type in say vase, let's click and drag this into our scene. And you see that it'll put it kind of just in a random place right now. It looks like it's kind of hidden by this box here and we'd have to move it. Uh, but if you have your place tool set, what you can do is click and drag it from your asset browser. And it actually respects the geometry in your scene straight out of the asset browser. So you can just place it right in your scene, right where you want it. And we have it flipped right now. That's because in our placement tool, I forgot to change that back to Y. But if we just click and drag it, we can throw it right into our scene and it's super easy to use. All right, so that's the place tool. Really great for populating your scene. Let's talk about if we have a bunch of objects in our scene, however. So the classic example is taking pens and putting them into a cup. That's because before all these tools, you would have to take your object, you'd have to kind of rotate it, you'd have to slide them around, and you have to place all of them in here like a goober from 2019. Now we can do all that with the dynamic place tool. All you have to do is highlight the four objects in your scene that you want to be clumped together, click on this dynamic place tool, and it's going to calculate a bounding box around each of these objects. And it's taking a little bit of time because I kicked my accuracy up. Let's kick that down to four. All right, so a couple things to mention. Sometimes the scale of your scene is set to one by default, and that might mess things up. So I'll show you what that looks like. But right now the default settings gives you this little gizmo we have rotation we have scale and we have this really important purple um, little line coming out of here with a box on the end if we click on that and drag it it's going to uh, push or pull these apart and you can see that once we push these together they are actually intersecting and that is based on the scale of your scene so if you change that to 0.1 a lot smaller of a scale it'll recalculate those bounding boxes and now if we push these together it will respect the geometry and it will kind of start a dynamic simulation with all these pens and pencils. So once you have these set up, all you have to do is drag this down in your cup and it's going to respect the boundaries of each other and the cup and it'll lay them in there perfectly. Another thing we can do instead of just pulling it down is we can just set up a little dynamic simulation and you do that by holding shift down. So if you hold shift down and then you click and then you drag down, it will just set up a little dynamic simulation which is pretty cool. And if we go to our placement tool, you can see that we do have some simulation settings. We have one for gravity. So right now it's set to the scene gravity amount and we have some friction and bounciness, but overall pretty easy to use. Just hit shift and click and then drag down and you got yourself a perfect simulation. Here's another scene with a bunch of bottles and they are all just duplicated on the exact same spot. Let's use our dynamic place tool and click and drag this purple line to pull them apart from each other. And instead of just dropping them in a dynamic simulation, another thing that you can do is actually throw them and scatter them around, which is pretty cool. So if we just click and drag and move these around, if we hold the shift key down and then throw them at the same time as we're letting go of the mouse button, they're going to just scatter about. So just shift click and throw them. And it's a great way to scatter things around your scene randomly really quickly if you wanna make things kind of cluttered and just have random objects everywhere. It's kind of fun. I think Jonas Pills demonstrated using dice as well, but it's kind of an obvious use case. You can place them really nicely on an object, kind of rolling them where you want them, or you can lift them up, hold shift down and chuck them. 
and it'll actually uh, go ahead and roll the dice for you, which is pretty cool. And another thing that Jonah showed was uh, that you can use this dynamic place tool with Cappuccino, which is really cool. And if you don't know what Cappuccino is, just hit Shift C and type in Cappuccino. And this is a way to convert something you're doing with dynamics into position keyframes. So if we go to uh, start at current time and check that off and we'll turn on PLA, we can just click on start real time and whatever we do will uh, record into keyframes. So if we throw this and then we stop our animation, if we just hit play, you can see that we actually have this entire animation stored as keyframes and we have that animation set, which is pretty cool. So that's another great way to use these dynamic place tools and actually capturing an animation. All right, so one last thing, I'm gonna show you this kitchen scene here. All right, let's take all these mugs Let's click on the dynamic place tool. It's going to calculate uh, exactly what's going on here. And we'll scrunch these up and we'll hold shift and drag it down. And unfortunately, you can see that um, it's not dropping into the sink, which is what we want. So if we go to visualize colliders, you can see that there is no hole for the sink and that is an accuracy problem. So if we put this up to 10 on accuracy, now there's a hole for that sink. We can turn off the visualize colliders. We can scrunch these cups back up here and pull them up and let's drop them again. And now we're able to drop them into the sink, which is great. And let's also go to our apples. We'll highlight all of those and we'll take that purple thing, scrunch them together. And then, like I said, you can either drag them down into the bowl and just like that, have a perfect bowl full of apples or you can hit shift C and drop them. And there you go. So that's a overview of the place tool and the dynamic place tool. Great way to place your objects in an organic way or scatter them about in a very random fashion. It's a really useful set of tools. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for checking out the Pixel Lab as always, and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.